Good afternoon, everyone. I haven't made a talking video in a while, so I figured we have an opportunity. I've got another paper that I'm working on right now. It's about Paracas. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's these stone soldiers that came to life. There was this battle where I'm going to use his easier sounding name. Pachacuti was way outnumbered. His brother and his father, the king, had abandoned the city of Cusco. And he's like, oh my god, what am I going to do? So he goes to sleep. He has a vision of Viracocha. And Viracocha, the, the Inca version of like the all over god, is like, don't worry, I will help you. And so when he wakes up, he goes into battle and he's like, wow, the, the Chancas are way outnumbering me. So all of a sudden he looks up on a hill and there are 20 legions of soldiers that he's never seen before. And they're coming from all directions. And there are differing accounts, but the consistency is that they were stones, and they'd come to life. And it's just like that part in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, where Hermione is like, no, oh, Harry is like, brilliant, it's like Hogwarts wants us to fight back! It's, it's exactly that point, only with the Chenkas and the stones becoming soldiers, and they're like, kick-ass soldiers, <laughs> like... In one of the accounts, it says that, like, they slit the throat out of everyone, and then after the battle, after the tide had turned, they turned back into stones. There are some accounts where they say that they were invisible, too. Where that's absolutely fascinating, to have this invisible force coming at you, and, like, the reason I picked it was because it reminded me of the end of Lord of the Rings, where all of those ghost soldiers come out of the mountains, and... They're trying to reclaim their dignity so they can finally rest. <laughs> but these invisible soldiers, and then they became stones. And the idea with that is after the battle, Viracocha came to Pachacuti again, and he was like, dude, I helped you guys. You need to give me something back. So Pachacuti went out, and he picked out all of the stones that had, be, had been soldiers, that had been the Pururacas. And then he organized this really elaborate sac sacrificial cult cultful sacrificial and cult it's called a seque c e q u e where there were these radiating spires out from the temple of the sun in Cusco and at a bunch of these spires there were like over 300 of them there would be a pararaca and there would be a cult devoted to that and there would be priests there so they could so that anybody who visited it would know the story of what this was and would be able to honor it. A bunch of different lore has said that people were so scared of the Puraracas that they wouldn't even fight Pachacuti's forces. It was such a massive thing that they didn't want to get involved in. I, I love, love South American mythology. Anyway. As always, let me know what you think if you have any experience writing massive, massive, scary papers. And what you thought of the Puruaka story. I'll, I'll put it in the title so you know how to spell it. it. It's taken me about three weeks to learn how to spell that thing. There's so many U's in it. <laughs> anyway, thanks. Hope you had a great day.